This is my trip. They admit it. Near the stadium. Right by the beach. And they found it. Instead of staying at a two-star, now we're staying at a four. Top of the line. Guaranteed best price. Priceline. This is my bridge. This is my building. And this is my truck. For people that care about getting the job done right, we built the Toyota Tundra better from the ground up. As Isabel continues inland, where will it head? Will you be affected? Find out the impact on your weekend and travel plans. We're tracking the storm with live there coverage from the field. Running six to nine, where there are no dudes to protect the hand. In-depth expert long. analysis. East winds onshore. Isabel coverage continues. Stay tuned to the Weather Channel as we keep you ahead of the storm. Stay tuned to the Weather Channel for continuing coverage of Hurricane Isabel right after your local on the eights. Currently in your area, 68 degrees, under cloudy skies. for your area. extended forecast. Hurricane Isabel is on shore now, and hundreds of thousands are without electricity. We do still have very gusty winds in many spots as well, and heavy rain will be a concern tonight. We'll talk about all the threats coming up in just a moment. Hello and welcome to this special edition of Weather Center. I'm Carl Parker. And I'm Christina Abernathy. Thanks for joining us. Well, let's get you up to speed on the storm. Here is the latest information that we have. Uh, widespread power outages, uh, obviously. President Bush, uh, North Carolina is a major disaster area, and Reagan National Airport is closed. And government offices will be closed until Monday, and D.C. schools will get a four-day weekend. We'll be live in the heart of the storm all evening, and heading up two of the crews we have out this hour are Bill Keneally in Ocean City, Maryland, and Jeff Morrow in Radio City, North Carolina. Well, let's start out now with uh, along the coast and see what's going on. Now to you guys. Oh, okay, we have Jim we have now Jim. in Kill Devil Hills. Mm -hmm. And Jim, it's been quite a day today out there. It really has, Carl. I can't confirm this, but I'm talking uh, probably 80, 95 miles with uh, the wind gusts around here. Certainly enough to cause uh, some structural damage to three of the hotels, really, uh, right in this area, Kill Devil Hills. Uh, I saw, you know, a lot of the shingles, uh, which were off of some of the roofs here. Uh, a lot of the homes, though, good news is no major structural damage to the roofs from what we could see, and that is definitely a good thing. But the water 
is another thing. Let me show you what the surge did this afternoon just down the road at Nags Head. Here we go, some big water coming in there, and as a result, just pushing right through this brick house, and uh, that's the end of that, unfortunately. And we've had reports of as many as three homes damaged in Nags Head and one up in through Kitty Hawk. Got a chance to talk to our hotel manager, and she had this to say about the storm. Some of the damage around the area, how extensive it is, yes. We've gotten, I think I've heard that there's a pier down in Kitty Hawk and there's some, some damage to some other hotels. So yeah, it, it, it is a little bit more extensive than I expected. I thought it would come through a little bit faster and be gone, but it's, it's, it's definitely beating us up pretty good. And uh, again, uh, good news uh, with that regard is things are moving through now, that's for sure, and things will be improving. But tomorrow, uh, looks like we're going to start the day without power here, guys, and there is going to be no one allowed over the Outer Bank bridges on into the Outer Banks tonight, regardless of the situation. So until they assess everything, looks like it's going to be kind of a quiet and dark night here on the Outer Banks. Well, let's go down south and find out how they fared there around Moorhead City. Jeff, uh, how's things down about 150 miles to our south? Well, it's pretty much the same story, Jim. We took a, a pretty good shot. Uh, the uh, hurricane actually, it passed to your west. It passed just to our east. So you were on the east side. I was on the west side. Uh, we kind of caught some of the western eye wall here. So we had some pretty significant wind. In fact, we have some pictures we can show you of uh, some of the wind and the rain that was occurring here during parts of the height of the storm. Generally between 10 o'clock this morning and about 1 or 2 this afternoon was the worst of it. Right around noon is when the winds were gusting our highest, probably around 80 or 90 miles an hour with some sustained winds, probably up around 60 or 65. Uh, that didn't last all that long, but it lasted long enough to topple a lot of trees, knock down a lot of power lines, Three to 4,000 people here in Carteret County without power. The biggest flooding concerns or problems that we've heard of are in a section of called Down East Carteret County, which is a lightly populated area. Still, a lot of people had to be rescued out of their homes on boats and cedars. Uh, that's up toward the Cedar Island area, which actually is where uh, one of the ferries goes over to the Outer Banks over there at Ocracoke Island. And we haven't heard anything out of Ocracoke, which got hit exceptionally hard with winds over 100 miles an hour. So we'll have to wait and see about there on the lower Outer Banks. But again, here in Carteret County, we, uh, we got hit, but uh, it wasn't as bad as a lot of people uh, had feared. And uh, still, there's going to be a lot of cleanup to do here. Now let's get back to you guys in the studio. Carl and Christina. All right, Jeff Morrow, thanks for joining us live from Radio Island, North Carolina. And obviously a very rough situation, lots in the way of erosion, mm -hmm. and we've had storm surge and some very high winds in some spots. But of course, at one time, this storm was a Category 5 hurricane, and the difference between a 2 and a 5 is enormous. It's yes. incredible. And so it turned out pretty well in that sense. Yeah, mercifully, it could have been much, much worse, and we're so glad that it, it did weaken. Although it is still causing problems, it could have been so much worse. That's exactly right. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about what happened earlier today, and the storm moved on shore at about 1 p.m. in North Carolina, right around Drum Inlet. That's between Ocracoke Island and Cape Lookout. And again, that happened at 1 p.m. this afternoon. That's when Jeff got those very, very strong winds. He was very close to that point. And here is the latest on the storm, still officially an 80-mile-an-hour storm. Storm, so still officially a hurricane. It's moving to the northwest of 20. That's very important because it won't be able to dump tremendous amounts of rain because of that fast forward motion and the pressure now up to 965 millibars. It's still very gusty across North Carolina. Winds here gusting to the 40s in many spots and then farther northward as of the last report. Winds gusting to 49 miles an hour in Baltimore, Maryland, 46 miles an hour near Patuxent River, 43 miles an hour in Georgetown, Delaware, and it's very gusty farther northward as we extend up into Long Island. It will continue to be through tonight and through tomorrow. We have a very tight pressure gradient here, so we're looking for wind gusts over 60 miles an hour around the bay into southeastern Pennsylvania and right into southern parts of Jersey as well. Another concern tonight will be isolated tornadoes. We have had some tornado warnings. The tornado watch continues to be in effect, and there will be very heavy rain in spots. But again, the good news is the storm is on the move, and that should limit the high end of that rain in many areas. And you'll want to stay with us. We'll have much more on Hurricane Isabel coming up. That's coming up after your local on the 8th. Please stay tuned.
this has shocked you. Lowe's has the biggest selection and the best brands of cabinets, countertops, and appliances available anywhere.